Hey, what's up, brothers and sisters? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Checking in here live from Harley Davidson from Miracle Mile. Um, sitting here waiting to get my uh, brand new 2017 Road Glide serviced. So, um, figured I'd, I'd do a live, a live and uh, give y'all some uh, whatever information that I've been putting out there on the shop gate floor. Um, I encourage that uh, many of you um, ask any questions that you may have. If I can answer it, I'll be more than happy to answer it. Um, uh, I believe in. Uh, I believe in the truth and uh, very important anyway uh, good morning I want to give a moment of silence start off with a quick moment of silence to our station agent Daryl Goodwin Daryl Goodwin was uh, fighting a battle in the courts where he was wrongfully arrested um, by NYPD and uh, all of a sudden, it, you know, God uh, took him into his gates quite early. And uh, the services will be August 21st. Um, you can check the TW website for more information on that. And uh, anyway, uh, also, I don't, uh, I don't want to forget to mention the bus operator out of Gun Hill Depot. His name is... Uh, I don't have a first name for him. All I know him as bus operator Rivera. Um, he lost his family and uh, in Puerto Rico, and um, the family is asking for help. A gun, they put up a, a GoFundMe. And there's a there's there's a information on this page where you can help that family out. Um, if you got a good giving heart, please feel free to help that family. Um, I think it's uh, very important that we we help each other. Um, I think they did. They made some changes. Um, Facebook Live. Well, it's asking me to invite invite some folks here, so I'm not sure how this works, but um, I'm inviting. Hey, what's up, Neptune? My brother. How, how you doing, doing? brother? Hey, I'm doing good. Hobby. In the Harley Davis right now, so get my first. I wish uh, I, I I wish I could be there, but you know, some of us gotta work, man. And my Harley's in the garage just collecting dust. Uh, well, you know, when you get dirty, you can get Saturday and Sunday off. <laughs> now you know what it is. I, I I actually have those days off, but you know, as uh as us getting these city checks, you know, we uh we gotta work overtime to be able to uh afford these luxury things, you know what I'm saying? Uh, touche, touche. <laughs> all right, brother, let me let me let me let me hit you up later, man. You just be good, all right? All right, got you, brother. All right. All right, so listen, uh you know, welcome to the conversation. Um um I want to start off, especially for the bus operators, we talk about bus track. Bus track is the GPS system that's used to monitor the movement of the buses. I'm pretty sure a lot of us know that, but what I think a lot of us fail uh, are failing at and not being aware of is that the bus track has a cookie system, so it could track your, your movements even inside the garage or lack of movements inside the garage. So the reason why I'm bringing this point up um, Let's just say there's an incident out there on the road, and they they use their investigatory um, folks to go see what's going on with your particular bus. They they utilize the GPS system and the cookie system, and it can backtrack exactly where your bus was at any point of your day. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is we had an incident in another depot where a bus was... Um, supposedly involved in a knockdown of a pedestrian and it was some under under investigation it was found 
that the bus, which should have been uptown or should have been at another terminal, was actually at the scene of the of of the pedestrian knockdown or close to it. And it was found that um you know, through the investigation we had to use the GPS to find where the bus was. And through the investigation it was found that the bus was on location and then they went back about 30 different other instances to find with that the our operator wasn't out here um performing his duties and the reason why i bring this point up and i could bring it up now i mean we we ended up doing what we needed to do we saved the operator's job all right but you know it's, it's a it's a charge of theft of service and and we've lost people in the in the past before so it's very important that that we when we out there we just do what we're supposed to do because it's it's not it's not um worth your job so let's let's um you know keep mind of that and um let's just do our jobs out there and you know anything that you do that gets yourselves in trouble you know such as the tough stuff i just mentioned you know it just weakens the union all right weakens the union why because sometimes we have to give up a long, and I'm you you using that statement metaphorically, but we have to give up things in order to save people, and that's what weakens the union. So you know, if you're doing your job, we can put up the fights that we need to put up, and we don't have to give up things, and we don't have to back off grievances, and 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 we don't have to make deals with management that's that's that you know may have an effect on on, on your membership. So you know, keep that in mind. Brother Medina, good morning to you. Um, spread this. I hope you're spreading this message out there to everybody. Everybody who's a bus operator need to be spreading this message out there. What's up, Roger? Wilfredo, Pacheco, what's going on? Joseph DiPolio, what's going on? Um, what's up, Mr. Yates? How we doing, brother? I'm hanging in there, brother, man. You know, out here in the Harley dealership. Just get my, my motorcycle service this morning, and I figured I'd come out here and just do it live, you know. I appreciate appreciate what you do. Yeah, thanks, brother. I appreciate the fact that you appreciate me. You know, you know there's, a lot of, there's a lot of people out there that hate me for whatever reason. Uh-huh. Well, it but, comes with know, the territory, man. It comes with the territory, man. man. People going to love, yeah, people going to hate. That's part of life, man. It's true that. It is what it is, man. I, I mean, I just come out here to do business. The union's been in my blood since very young. Um, my family was, was into, into fights for, for civil rights since I was young. So I used to attending rallies since I was young, man, Brooke, in Brooklyn, Manhattan, you know, all over the place we was doing rallies. So of course unionism was in my blood from, from day number one. Um, I don't always like the politics that goes on and, um, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you, I still don't like the politics that goes on, but. You know, I'm, I'm just like a straight shooter, like bike management. And oftentimes my, my, um, I'm handcuffed for whatever reason. I'm handcuffed because, you know, maybe there's something else going on. And, you know, and, and it's not only in this union. It's, it's happened to me in another union. Um, I used to mm-hmm. be a union rep on the, in the CWA, which is the Communication Workers of America. They, they represented some uh, traffic agents, and I was a union representative for the traffic agents. Okay. And a big thing over there with, with quotas, and we used to fight them on quotas. I got a guy elected president, and then uh, he told me one day of my phone call, I need to tone things down. So I, you know, <laughs> stand with tone down at, during that, during those days. So I I was like, after the union, I didn't want to be bothered no more. No, I hear that. But you know, as I got older, you know, I realized, you know, there, you know, politics does have its place, you know. It's a lot of wheeling and dealing that goes on, and and that's just the way you know life is. Uh, but anyway, um, how's things with you? you know? Good, good. On vacay over here in Florida right now, just uh, getting everything oh. ready, just pe- peeping at what you got to say before I start heading out my day. You know. All right. So listen, man. I'm gonna, I want to click you off. I'm just gonna go. That's all this. good, brother. It's all good. I'm just hearing what the good word you got to say. All right. All right, man. So, listen, you, you enjoy your vacation, man. Oh, uh, listen, man. I'll be back soon, and uh, I'll see you guys then. All right, brother. Be good. You too, my brother. Enjoy the dealership.
All right. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, um, I just want you know a little information. The um, bus rodeo is going to be on September sixteenth and seventeenth. It's going to be an Aqueduct racetrack in South Ozone Park, um, Queens. Um, put in your application. You get it from your general dispatcher's office. Fill out the application. They'll forward it over to um, the the proper folks that who will determine if you qualify to go in the rodeo or not. Um, moving along, uh, I said that I would keep saying this, and I'm talking about the Constitutional Convention. Constitutional Convention is supposed to be on no um, no. Well, there'll be a vote for the Constitutional Convention on November 7th. We're, we're encouraging our uh, membership to vote no. And the reason why we're constantly getting out here and, and bringing this message out here to vote no is because that there's certain laws that would affect your pension, could affect workers' compensation, could affect retirees' pensions, where it can just eliminate you guys' uh, uh understanding of the laws from what they are now and and you know we don't want to even give them the opportunity or give them a chance to change any laws that are, that benefit us right now so keep in mind constitutional convention november 7th of this year well i'm, I'm sorry let me repeat that it's the vote there's a vote for a constitutional convention november 7th we're gonna we're, we're asking our membership to vote no and and it's not only it doesn't only stop at your members it also it also stops um it, you also got to go talk to your the, the people who you know who live in new york state your neighbors and stuff people who you you surround it with you know this affects them too so um be uh be easy everybody and make sure that y'all vote um no on the constitutional convention all right um <clears throat> uh moving along Reporting crime on your buses. All right, so when you when, in reporting crime on your buses, it's very important that you report the dealings that go on on your bus, especially if some if a customer comes to you and acts and, and reports some type of a crime. Uh, and the reason being, we've had an incident where someone claimed some type of sexual assault on the bus. Um, the operator didn't think nothing of it. And this, you know, oftentimes, you know, we understand, you know, I'm, I'm a union rep and I understand, you know, being out there having to operate a bus. Sometimes you just don't want to be bothered with stuff. You, you want to keep your day going. But it's very imperative that you just pr cover yourself and press the RTT. And um, <clears throat> this way you got the command center going and the command center will be involved in this way. It covers you. All right. Um, so all you have to do. And then if you follow the directions from the command center at that point, all right. And uh, that's really nothing more, nothing too much to say about it. Just cover yourself and, and, and press the command center. Uh, so, um, what's, um, good morning, everybody, and good morning to Eddie Fowler from Manhattanville. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie, man. Thank you. Uh, anyway, so moving along. This we've had some um, the, the fall prints came out, which y'all are picking from right now, and um, you know there's a lot of unhappy campers about the pick, and I got to tell you, um, a lot a lot of the a lot of the schedules that's going on with the pick is a reflection on on how we're operating our buses out there, and you know don't think that we're in we're office junkies, we're not. We're out in the field. We we actually see. We ride the buses. We're in our cars. We actually, as union reps, we see people still actually using cell phones and, and, and stuff. And, you know, I'm just, you know, warning you, don't get caught out there with that. But as far as the scheduling, like, again, I go back to the, the bus track and the GPS system. You know, when you when you run in ahead of schedule and you're in another head, headway of another bus, <clears throat> it, it, it's, it makes a determination that they don't need the bus out there anymore. Because you come, this is not just a one-day event. This is a constant event where people are being ahead, going ahead of schedule. And the fare box, you know, tells a tale, too. And um, sometimes it's just, uh, you know, unavoidable. I mean, I could file all the grievances against their movements and, and changes in schedule. But the, the fact remains, they come back with a, with a printout of, of 
a, a bus being in another headway. And, and these are the reasons for the cuts. And we have to, we have the ability to, to, to control our own destiny here. And we're not doing it because we're in a rush to get to one place to the other, to the other, one, 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 on one part of the route to the other part of the route, just turn around again and do it again. What are we rushing for? And that's how accidents happen. We need to slow it down. We need to stay in the lanes that they taught us that we have to stay in. And in and, and, and doing that, you will, you'll build up your, you'll, they'll have to put other trips there. They'll build it up and, and, and you will find that the run pay will be growing. So anyway, the 21st, um, the 21st is also the day that we're going to have, supposed to have a solar eclipse here going across uh, North, uh, North, North America. Um, just want to give everybody a reminder about that solar eclipse is to not look directly at the sun. They've been putting all types of reports out there. Um, even your, your, your sunglasses are not supposed to be put on um, protection to the ultraviolet rays that can get into your eyes. Don't, don't, don't look directly at the, um, at the sun during these, during these times. And in addition, um, we have, uh, operations planning on the 21st and I will come report later on on what the New York city transit department of buses plans is regarding, uh, probably movement of lines and, uh, and shuttles and, and ongoing work. So just stay tuned for that one. Um, FMLA. This is for the Manhattan depots only. Now, there is no, as far as FMLA, guide, FMLA guidelines, there's pretty much no consistency across New York City Transit or MTA for that matter. So, I have to just tell you that, that a lot of the practices that's been going on since day number one of FMLA's, um, if when the FMLA first came on the scene, um, we, we, as, he, as FMLA evolved, we've never had to fill out forms, except if you had FMLA for yourself, you might be required to fill out a sick form because you use the best of the, of the contract over the law. So the, the contract says that you get paid and then you got to follow the sick control rules of the contract if you intend on getting paid. But as far as FMLA for family members, you know, um, in certain in other depots across the system and other, other places, they require you to fill out a form for family members. In the Manhattan division, that is not a requirement. But oftentimes, management will try to slip something in, and, and uh, they'll try to slip a form in for you to fill out. Mine, I'm, I would like to encourage you to make sure that you take your FMLA, um, FMLA form, if management gives it to you, and take it to your chairman. Because you're not supposed to be filling out an FMLA form for, for your family members. They already know the condition. They don't really need to know. Listen, I took FMLA. You, you called it up at the at the at the um, crew dispatcher's office. I'm taking FMLA for my um for my whomever, my parent, my my daughter, my son, whatever. Whatever you got FMLA for. There's no need for you to fill out additional paperwork. Okay, um, especially in Manhattan, and and I'm talking specifically of the Manhattan division because we don't fill paperwork out. We haven't. We've never was, was under that pilot program, and if you are asked to do it, um, particularly in uh, the Mother Clara Hill Depot, um, don't do it because you don't have to do it, all right? And I just want to make that clear. You don't have to do it. Um, many times, the information that I bring out is, is negative, and I just want to say that the, the information that comes out is 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 whether negative or positive is, is, uh, is knowledge and knowledge is power. And as far as I'm concerned, no one is half the battle. No one is half the battle. Um, I want to give a shout out, um, sp particularly to my, to my, to all my children, uh, my, uh, my six girls. I also want to give a shout out to my wife who, who tolerates, some of the things that I do, because, you know, I, do, I, I bring unionism home into the house. I'm like a 24-7 union rep, and I know it could be frustrating at times. But, um, you know, it is what it is. This is who I am. 
Um, but I just want to shout her out because, you know, she, you know, she is very patient about it. And, um, I, you know, I try to keep her involved with everything that I do. And um, that's just what it is. I mean, I think that we all should be that way with our other halves and our family. Um, good morning, Nicole. Hey, good morning, um, Meekism. Um, I just want to I want to let you know that I saw you the other day when I was doing the um, the motorcycle uh, suicide run, and we started in the Bronx. I happened to see you. You was working the BX9 last week Sunday. Um, so you know, just want to shout you out. I got honked at you, but I don't think you uh, really knew who it was. <laughs> you probably was pissed off anyway because we was taking it. We was, we was taking up the streets that that that, that morning. Um. Anyway, uh, if 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 anybody uh, you know got anything got anything for me, I mean, feel free. You know, ask me what ask me any questions that you want to ask, and um, we can we can uh, have a little conversation. Ask me any questions, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um. Roger Dad, I'm going to invite you on Roger Dad, and you can ask your question real quick. So, you know, I like this little feature that Facebook Live has because you can actually um, pick a member out, and then they can ask you a live question. I'm not sure if everybody else can hear it, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming that everybody else can hear it. So, um, you know, Roger, I'm, 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 I'm hitting you up right now. All right, well, I guess let me go to, uh, all right, let me, let me go to um, Alfredo Pacheco. Oh, I guess I'm doing something wrong here. Let's see, let me, let me talk to my boy, Ed Garrison. You know, this this little feature is cool, man. Uh, ah, this is this you know this is this is all right. This is all right. And uh, anybody, any if if you have any questions for me, I'm gonna um you know we're gonna go offline. Um, I'll answer anything that you have. I'm here in Harley Davidson for a few hours and doing some and doing my first thousand mile service. Then I had to get some some um, some bars that I wanted installed on the bike as well. So uh, anyway, listen, you guys, you have a, a great day, everybody. And um, you can ask some questions offline, and I'll be happy to answer them. Be safe, everyone. God bless.